Impacted Canines, what is the latest? Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary, where I'll be giving you a summary of the management of impacted canines with the latest evidence regarding the two main techniques of open versus closed exposure. This podcast is based on an excellent lecture given by Judah Normova at last year's British Orthodontic Conference. Now, part one of this podcast will focus on the research about the clinical outcomes of open versus closed exposure, but also the patient outcomes of what takes place. The second episode will look at root resorption and how clinical decision making has been reappraised with some of the research that Julia has been carried out. Julia starts by describing this is a well-researched area within orthodontics. We've had large systematic reviews by Nicola Parkin in 2017 and Cassina in 2018. However, this was based upon 2D imaging. Julia Nomova wanted to re-ask these questions in the light of contemporary 3D imaging with CBCTs. To start off with, Julia asked, well, what is current clinical practice based on when it comes to open versus closed exposure requests? And actually, in her study from 2018, it was shown the position of the canine was not actually that. It was related down to our personal clinical preferences. So Julia's multi-center randomized control trial was carried out by Magina Berkswend as part of her PhD. Now they looked at open versus closed exposure. The open exposure technique was a modified version of. It didn't involve periodontal dressings or a cover plate, but instead involved glass ionomer cement, or the GOPAX technique, which was first described by Norvodon in, two, in 1999. Now this technique also involves allowing the canine to spontaneously erupt for approximately six months before applying traction. So what were the results from this high quality study? Well, the overall treatment time was no different between the open and closed exposure techniques. However, when we look at the data in a more granular fashion, we'd find that the open exposure group, the canine was visible three months earlier than the closed exposure group. And that's eight and a half months for the open group and 11 and a half months for the closed exposure group. Now, when it came to looking at other outcomes, there's no difference in periodontal status, root resorption, surgical time or complication. Pain was another factor looked at by Julia, and that was interesting. There seemed to be more pain in the closed exposure group. However, in the open group, bilateral open exposures were significantly more painful for patients. In the closed exposure group, there was more pain during the traction phase of orthodontic treatment. And what I loved about Julia's research is she asked more questions to help us explain what actually transpires for our patients. And she asked them about analgesics. How often were they used? At day one, nearly all patients were using analgesics. But by the time it came to day five, this dropped down to around 50%. And at day 10, nearly all patients had stopped taking their pain relief. What about the costs of these two different techniques? Well, overall, the treatment costs and the direct costs were the same between both groups. And the average cost in the Swedish system was 3,400 euros. But Julia asked a more profound question. What about the indirect costs? How about the cost to the patient, about time of work and transportation? And the overall costs were the same. And it was increased to 6,300 euros for what was termed the societal costs of managing an impacted canine. Days off school. The average patient was between 13 and 14 in this randomized control trial. Now, what Judah found was that nearly all patients took the first and second days off from school. When it came to the third day, nearly all patients had returned with approximately 5% of patients still taking the third day off. Now, with all good forms of research, there has to be some negatives associated with that technique. And what Judah described with GOPAX or the glass anima modified technique is that it's not appropriate for all cases. And if the canine has a very close relationship to the adjacent tooth, then the glass ionomodified modified technique should be avoided. The material can then be transmitted to the adjacent tooth. If the canine is a, in a very high position, this may not be a pragmatic approach to be able to place glass ionoma to that position of that tooth. She also gave the word of caution about the older patient. And she summarized a study carried out by Concheva in 2024, we looked at ankylosis of patients in different ages. And at age of 15, only 1% of canines are ankylosed. It increases to 4% at the age of 20. 
14% age of 25, and actually nearly all canines are ankylosed at the age of 45. So to summarize Julia's research, both techniques of open unclosed are viable techniques to manage the impacted canine. The advantage of the glass ino modified technique, or GOPEX, is that the canine does erupt quicker during that period. There's less pain associated with the open technique. However, regardless of techniques, the costs to the patient and to the healthcare systems are the same. The pain relief is usually done for the first five days, and most patients have stopped by the 10th day. There's also patients' time off from school, which is usually two days for the average patient. There's still some more questions to be asked. I would love for Julia to explore this topic even further and to get granular about the location of the canine and how our techniques impact upon that process. I hope you guys look forward to the second episode. We'll be re-asking the question about root resorption associated with impacted canines and what our clinical decision making should be around those teeth. As always, please do subscribe and look forward to next episode.